Super Rugby's viewership numbers, at least here in New Zealand, are up, according to New Zealand Rugby. We'll go through a few little numbers that New Zealand Rugby has put out in the media and uh, compare that to kind of some of the attendances and the other online traffic and you guys can let us know your thoughts. Now, I'm always a little bit skeptical when I get this kind of news from the people whose best interest it is to make themselves look in a positive light. But Sky Box viewership is up by 9%. Now, what does that mean? Well, Sky is the paid broadcaster here in New Zealand for Super Rugby. And if you've got a little box set connected to your aerial, that's the way you watch the game. That's the way my father watches his rugby. Those viewers are up 9% from last year. The other two areas that have gone up, 22% with Sky Sports Now viewers. That's the people using the either website or um, app on their TV or computer or phone or whatever. It's the online viewers, essentially, up 22%. Also, free to air, up 20%. Yeah, you may say... Free to air in New Zealand wants delayed free to air. They put some of the games on a free to air channel prime over here. I think it's pretty much two hours after the game. So basically when the game finishes, they then put a replay on straight away. It's certainly not every game, but they put on at least one or two games a week. I think I never watched them that way, so I'm not the guy to ask, but I know they do put some games on, but never, ever, ever live. Certainly never, never live. God forbid you put some free rugby out there. Only delayed once you probably already know the result. But anyway, uh, it's certainly a bit of nothing. But these numbers are up. So things are looking hunky-dory. Now, my first reaction to this was, well, that's good. That's certainly good. I'm glad the numbers are up and they're not down. However, I do remember last year, there was talk about how the numbers were down. 2022 was a kind of low-ish year. So the fact that you're up after last year being not that great, maybe doesn't look quite as flash and they also um i remember last year compared 2022's numbers to a couple of rugby world cup year times when the numbers kind of spike so in a rugby world cup year the numbers of rugby viewers tend to go just a bit higher because people are a little bit more invested in the storyline that you know ends with the rugby world cup starting with your super rugby season so numbers are up yes but we're coming on the back of a kind of low year and we're in a rugby world cup year so i kind of balance that out to say well again well at least we're not down but i wouldn't be kind of you know jumping up and down about the numbers being up that much but still up is better than down we'll certainly take that um with regards to the attendance though uh, new zealand rugby were a little bit more coy and they said they are still waiting to get the attendance numbers from the clubs and the fact that uh, it's easier to get the viewership numbers from Sky. I doubt that a lot. Excuse me for being cynical. But back in the day, every Super Rugby game used to have the stats available on how many people attended. Right up until about the point when the attendance has started to look kind of bad. And now we get basically selective attendance reporting. Like if there's a really big bumper crowd, that number is told to you. If the crowd is kind of poor that number is not told to you. So for example, the crowd at Eden Park when they played the Crusaders this year was almost 24,000 people. Crusaders against Blues uh, at Eden Park. So Blues Crusaders. Uh, that was reported. The next week, the Blues host the Force in the afternoon. I went to that game, filmed around, did a video of it in case you haven't seen it, but the crowd was pretty sparse. Do you think those numbers are available? No. No, they're not. So anytime you're going to be selective with the data you show me, makes me uh, a little bit a little bit skeptical but from the data we did see i would say like comparing it to like 10 years ago numbers i think are still down but they are maybe not universally down we still get good crowds um sometimes it's pretty similar i feel like the chiefs in 2013 their crowds were higher than than they have been this year uh some of the blues crowds have certainly been a bit lower this year but i mean like 2023 20, this year we got as i said 23,900 for that blues crusaders game 10 years ago it was 31,000 so still kind of significantly more but then on the flip side hurricanes chiefs this year was 16,000 whereas 10 years ago it was 13,000 so it's not universally down and it's hard to know because 2013 i'm pretty sure all the attendances are listed Whereas this year, as I said, it's pretty selective. So it's kind of hard to compare apples with apples. But 
If you want to look at the NRL club that's based here in Auckland, they are averaging over 20,000 this year. So certainly it's not fair to say that people aren't wanting to just go out and attend games because Mount Smart Stadium, where the Warriors play, you know, it's not that much flasher than uh, any of the other stadiums that the Super Rugby teams play at. But um, yeah, they'll obviously try and find excuses for poor attendances. Overall, I would say attendances are down, but the viewership numbers are up with that kind of caveat of it being Rugby World Cup year and coming off the back of a, a not that great year. But um, one area that always looks good when I look at it is the, uh, is the YouTube highlights. Super Rugby's YouTube highlights blow every other competition out of the water. Now, it's not, it's not necessarily a simple kind of like-for-like -like comparison, but certainly if you're just looking at the baseline viewer numbers, I've mentioned this before, Super Rugby's numbers are just phenomenally high. Like, poor games would be like 70,000 views. Like, Rebels Force got like 70,000 viewers on a regular season highlights package. But many of the games often are over 100,000 views and usually over 200,000 views. The biggest, I think, was the Crusaders getting beaten by the Drua had over 360,000 views. Now, one thing I will say that Super Rugby does well is they put out the highlights very quickly after the game. And the highlights are about six minutes, which is enough to show all the kind of key events and they give you a decent bit of feeling for how the game was played, maybe get you uh, enticed enough to watch the game. But then again, also, with all the key bits being available so quickly, maybe that means some people decide, ah, I don't need to buy Sky, because I'll just watch the highlights. If you're not kind of that interested, it's kind of, which one do you do you kind of go for? Is it better to have the highlights up and quick or is it better to kind of delay them? I mean, the URC is one of the other competitions I follow. Um, highlights there are generally really uh, a mixed bag. Depends on who the teams are playing. If it's like one of the Italian teams against one of the Welsh teams, you're going to get like 10, 20,000 views. Uh, the final, I think, had 185,000, so not really great. A lot of the games are 50-odd thousand, but their highlights packages are three minutes and uh, they are never up quickly after the game. So they seem to do deliberately bad highlights packages. And also some of the broadcasters carry the highlights on their own networks as well. I mean, that happens with Super Rugby too. But yeah, their highlights seem deliberately poor. Like in three minutes, often you don't even see all the tries that were scored in the game. It's, it's kind of insane. The editing of those is really poor. Uh, the top 14's highlights packages are not really popular, uh, it would seem. And... Um, the Premiership ones in England, mostly over under 100,000 K, uh, 100,000 views. Uh, for the kind of Premier competition in Europe, the Champions Cup, some of their numbers are pretty big. Like the, the final had over 300,000 views, but many of the pool matches less than 100,000. So that's what I'm saying. Super Rugby, in terms of its YouTube engagement, does really well compared to all the other kind of major competitions. They, they really, really smash it. So I would... Um, kind of concur a little bit with what New Zealand Rugby is saying in that they said off-site um, engagement is high, but they need to work on getting more bums on seats because it's certainly not a great look to see empty seats uh, in some of the stadiums. But they did also put out a news story today saying unprecedented demand for the, the final. The Chiefs against the Crusaders has... You know, seen the game sell out. I don't think that's a news story. Like, Super Rugby Final sells out? Bro, that should be a non-story. That should be... Yes, it should sell out. The semifinals should sell out. The quarterfinals should sell out. Realistically. I mean, maybe don't expect every pool stage game to sell out. But, yeah. That's... Um, I mean, again, they're, they're trying to put out good news. I never want to be too much of a negative Nelly. As I said, I'm, I'm happy that these numbers are up. I don't think the attendances are dire... In some areas, but I do think um, it needs it needs some love and attention. That is for sure. But yeah, you guys let us know what your thoughts are. How engaged with you, with Super Rugby are you? I would say. I mean, I know personally from experience of running this channel, Super Rugby interest on this channel is certainly lower than what it used to be. But um, yeah, you guys let us know your thoughts. I do feel like the on-field product is great. I am very much looking forward to the... Um, to the final this weekend, but yeah, you guys take care, and um, I'll talk to you guys again soon.